Hey there, so glad that you can join me, whether you're joining me live right now or perhaps uh, a little bit later watching this on YouTube or on my website, theginamiller.com. So glad that you can join us for the So You Want to Be a Sportscaster Google Plus Hangout. This is the place where I will answer anything you ever wanted to know about a career that so many people think is an absolute dream job. And I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty good gig if you can get one. Good gig, tough industry. We're going to dive into all of that and much more over the course of the next 30 minutes or so. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Gina Miller. I have been a sportscaster my entire life. Um, it's really all I ever wanted to do, and it's all I ever still want to do. Uh, it's a fun gig. It's so much fun. I've had the chance to cover the NBA Finals, uh, Final Fours, uh, World Series, Breeders' Cups, uh, National Championship Games, and so much more. There is a little bit about me in my bio. Uh, you can reach me online always at theginamiller.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at theginamiller. Now, I promise I'm not a tool. <laughs> I, uh, somebody has ginamiller.com, a real estate agent in North Carolina has that web address and somebody who hasn't tweeted or used Instagram in a couple years has Gina Miller. So that's why I had to go with the uh, article before my name. Um, you can reach me on Facebook at the Gina Miller and you can hang with me on Google Plus at Plus Gina Miller Media. A little bit about me and my career. I've been in the business for longer than I care to remember. I'm a Dallas native and I was uh, I've been here in Dallas-Fort Worth for the last 15 years. I've worked for the Dallas Cowboys uh, during Chan Gailey and Dave Campos' era. I've worked at Channel 8, WFAA-TV, KTVT, and KTXA most recently. I left uh, CBS 11 and TXA 21 in October last year. That's a story for another day. Another day. While I was there, I hosted the Dallas Mavericks, Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Stars, and Texas Rangers pre- and post-game shows, among others. I've also worked in Knoxville, Tennessee. I have worked in Guam. That's where my first on-air job was. I was the sports director of KUAM TV in Guam. And I also worked in Houston. I was an intern for the Houston Rockets during the 94-95 season, and I won an NBA championship ring. That was a lot of fun. And I also worked at KHOU TV as a sports producer. That was actually a paid job. So that's a little bit about me. Um, again, you can ask anything you want during the course of this broadcast. I see we have some more viewers coming on. So glad to see some of you on here. Reminder, you can ask me anything. Just do so via the Google Plus Q&A app that you'll see right down below at the bottom of your screen. I'm looking forward to hearing some of your questions. I want to tell you why I wanted to do this broadcast. I have been in this business for, gosh, since the 90s, and I consistently get email from high school students, college students, as well as mid-career professionals. I've even received an email from a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Every single one of those emails is along the lines of, you have my dream job, how do I get into this industry, uh, what do I need to do to become a sportscaster, and can you share some tips and tricks to help me learn more about the business? And so the answer to that is yes, because as proof of you know, kind of how interested people are in this industry, I have four meetings in the next two weeks with high school students and college age students, as well as one mid-20s professional. All of them are interested in getting into the business, and I'm more than happy to share some of my um, insight and my perspective on this industry. By no means am I an expert, but I've seen a lot. I've worked with a lot of interns. I've um, worked with a lot of professionals over the years. I've received a lot of coaching over the years, and Lord knows I have made a lot of mistakes in this industry. Uh, I started my career, like I showed you back there, back in the mid-90s, and something that is was true then and is true to this day. Working in sports media is all about getting experience and getting your hands dirty. It's very much a trade in that sense. There's only so much that professors at a university or teachers in school can really impart to you. This industry is about going out, making mistakes, learning from those mistakes, 
and then doing them all over again. Uh, you can practice in school uh, being a sportscaster or being a news anchor or shooting with a camera. But until you actually get out in the field and deal with a real deadline of having a package that's due on the air at 6.15 on live TV weighing over your shoulders when you just started editing that package 30 minutes ago. You really can't replicate that in a school setting. This is an industry that experience counts. And um, making those mistakes, learning from those mistakes, and moving on is really very important. That's why internships are so important in this industry. When I was at CBS 11, WFAA, uh, WBIR in Knoxville, we had very healthy internship programs. And they're competitive. Local universities definitely try and put uh, seniors, perhaps juniors, in contact with people at TV stations in the newsroom, in the sports department, in the weather department, in the graphics department, in the photography department, to help those young professionals learn everything they can about this industry. Because like I said, it's all about experience, getting your tape together, getting your reel together, learning how to talk on camera, how to shoot, so much of this industry now is about multimedia journalism. Um, it was that way back when I started. I started uh, WBIR TV as a sports producer, sports photographer, and weekend morning sports anchor. So my particular job duties on a Saturday, for example, were that I would get at four in the morning, I would go to the TV station and anchor the morning sports, then I would go out and I would shoot Typically, Maryville College basketball or a Tennessee basketball game, University of Tennessee basketball game. Come back, edit that for the 6 o'clock show, then go home, do it all over again at 4 in the morning. On Sundays, my days were long because I also produced the Sunday Night Sports Talk Show, which aired at 11 o'clock in the evening. So it was about a 20-hour day, but that's what you do. This is an industry in which there's a lot of competition, and uh, hiring managers almost leverage that competition because they know that people are willing to work for free, they know that people are willing to work cheaply, and they know that experience is so vital to your success in this industry. So how do you get that experience? I talked about interning. Interning is so very important. And like I said, if you're a junior or senior in school, and if you're in a good university that has a strong internship program, you'll likely have that opportunity presented to you. If you're younger than that, how do you go about getting that internship opportunity, getting your foot in the door, something that is so important? A lot of hiring managers and TV stations, they won't allow interns to work with them unless they get credit. So what you could do is you could ask to shadow someone. I know some TV stations and some media outlets frown upon this and in fact don't allow it. But there are some that do that. I have had people shadow me multiple times both at WFAA TV, at KTXA and KTVT, uh, the CBS affiliate here in Dallas, and at WBIR, the NBC affiliate in Knoxville. Shadow days are a great way just to spend some time with one particular person in the sports media or news industry, learn about their job, learn how they go about getting things done. Uh, when I was in college at the University of Houston, I shadowed Bob Allen at KTRK TV in Houston. That was the ABC affiliate back then, and I'll never forget, he burped in front of me, and he did another bodily function. We joke about this. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't something that is shocking to anybody, but it was like, whoa, here you go. This is what life is like in the sports world. So definitely, A, try and get a shadow day involved. B, the next step would be to get an internship. What about beyond that? You can't get an internship and you can't get a shadow day. That doesn't mean you can't get experience. I tell this to so many people, even in their teens right now. You have opportunities now that none of us had just 15 years ago. You have the internet. You have this platform of Google+, Plus, of YouTube, of so many different ways to broadcast and share your voice. My advice to you, if you're interested in uh, starting a career in sports journalism, is to start now. Don't wait. Start now. Start a blog. Get a blog going. Just it's, it's free and it's easy to set up. You can set one up at Tumblr, at Blogspot, Blogger, the Google platform. You could do a video blog just right here on YouTube. You could do one on WordPress. Again, start a blog. Start writing. Start finding something that interests you and write about it. This serves multiple purposes. It helps you develop your voice. 
And I know that may sound kind of weird, but your voice really is important. And I'm not talking about the talking that I'm doing now. I'm talking about your perspective, your point of view, your voice when writing. If you want to go into sports television, you're still going to write. And you're going to write a lot. I wrote all of my scripts. I hosted an hour-long sports show Monday through Friday, five nights a week when I was the main host of the fan sports show. I wrote an hour-long show. I wrote time and time again. Writing is so important. Start the blog. Start the website. Find some sports stories that intrigue you. Find something that gets your blood pumping a little bit and just simply write a blog post about it. Sharing your perspective, adding context to a particular sports, sports story. No matter where you live, there's something going on that resonates with you and, and gets your blood going a little bit. What do you think about the Dallas Cowboys? What do you think about the Dallas Mavericks? What do you think about the Houston Texans sort of throwing in the towel this season? I mean, there are a lot of different stories out there that you can weigh in on. This allows you to just put it out there. And if you start now, if you're a teenager really interested in being in this business, by the time you graduate, say you're 15, and you graduate you know, seven years from now, graduate college, you're 22, you'll have had seven years worth of work, a body of work that has developed over the years, that has been refined over the years, that has really gotten a lot better over the years, and it will be impressive to hiring managers when you go out there in the real world. I would then take it a step further. If you want to be on TV, Again, we didn't have this, this YouTube or these, these video outlets that you have now. In fact, when I was getting started in this business and I wanted to be on television, I would stand in front of my mirror with a hairbrush or a can of hairspray. I actually have a microphone now. But I would just stand in front of the mirror and practice talking and practice doing a sports report and practice doing something live. The Mavericks are going on the road for the next two games. The Dallas Cowboys are in London to take on the 1-8 and eight Jacksonville Jaguars, that sort of a thing. Talking and, and learning how your voice sounds to somebody else, hearing it, seeing yourself move on camera. You know, it's funny, once you see yourself on camera, and this can be devastating the first time you watch yourself. I hate watching myself. Um, the first time, first time or two you watch yourself and see yourself on camera, you might find that there are some nuanced things that you do or some weird idiosyncrasies that you have that you didn't even know that you have. For example, I had a bad habit of doing this all the time. It's like a Chandler Parsons three-pointer sort of thing. I don't know what this was. I would just do this when I was talking on camera. Or you'll see a lot of people when they're shooting stand-ups, they do what we call the anchor vagina. So don't hate me for this, but the anchor vagina, they'll talk sort of like this. Let me take that lower third off so you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. They'll talk and they'll just stand and they'll say, so as you can see behind me, the election is wrapped up tonight. I mean, they do this anchor vagina thing and, and nobody talks like this in real life, right? I mean, nobody does that. So practice talking on camera because you have this available to you right now. If you're watching this on Google Plus Live or if you're watching it later down the road on YouTube, you probably have a video on some form of so a mobile device, whether it be a laptop or an iPad, just like this. Record yourself. Record yourself. Write down a few lines, record yourself, and see how you talk, how you move, how you react, how you breathe. It's, it's not easy learning to talk to a camera when nobody's there, and you really can't gauge the feedback that you're getting. Um, that can be kind of difficult. So you really have to learn to talk to the camera and engage with the person beyond the camera. The camera is truly somebody else in the room. So those are definitely a couple things that I would highly encourage you to get started doing now, because it goes back to that point. This industry is so much about practice and getting experience and making mistakes and learning from your mistakes and moving on and doing better the next time around. It's also an industry that's quite frankly all about who you know. Every job I've gotten, well, uh, except for the job in Guam and except for the job uh, in Knoxville. Every job I've gotten has been through somebody calling me or me cold calling somebody else. It's, uh, it's all about who you know. And it's, it's a large industry 
but it's very small in a sense because everybody knows everybody else. There are people working in Seattle, people working in Arizona, people working in Guam, people working in New York, people working all over the world in news, sports, weather, production, every aspect of this industry um, that I know. And uh, it's really all about a phone call. You know, you find out about an opportunity, you make a phone call, and and you might have a better chance of getting that opportunity. It's about who you know. And, and that goes back to the point of shadowing and interning. And another point I want to make, getting involved in social media. If you want to get involved in the news industry, whether it be in sports or weather or news, you definitely want to get involved in social media. Um, that's actually a tool that hiring managers are looking for in young professionals, particularly millennials. Uh, they think that those millennials, you guys, are the most socially savvy folks around. Well, they want to leverage that. They want to take advantage of that in terms of what you know about the social media stratosphere, this dynamic world. It serves multiple purposes, you getting involved in social media right now. If you follow people that you admire and respect in this industry, engage them in conversation. I, I guarantee you, sure, there are some tools out there who won't want to talk to you and who'll big time you, but I promise you, more often than not, people do want to help you. They want to help you get ahead, and they will respond to your tweets, to your Facebook messages, to your inquiries, if they're professional and polite and, and walk a certain line. This helps you down the road. Say you're trying to reach out to that person or the TV station at which that person works. You've already got an in. You've known that person on social media. Perhaps just by tweeting that person and you've developed somewhat of a Twitter relationship or a social media relationship with that person over the years, you can then get in touch with that person later down the road and, and, and say, hey, can you put me in touch with your intern hiring manager? Can you recommend somebody I talked to in Denver, for example, at a TV station in Denver because I'm interested in, uh, in a job there? I've helped a number of people out just through social media, and I, I'm happy to do it, and I've enjoyed doing it simply because that person reached out to me and was polite and nice and, and respectful and did it. So get involved in social media. Don't be afraid to put content out there. Be polite, be respectful, but be involved as well. Don't be afraid to do it because if you want to be in this industry and if you want to be out there in front of everybody, you're, you're going to have to put yourself out there at some point. It's sort of like leaping without a net, just going out there, do it, and, and don't look back. Um, I get a lot of questions about, particularly from young women uh, who want to go into sports broadcasting, what's it like being a woman in the sports industry? <laughs> um, it's not as big of a deal now as it was when I started out. Uh, I was the first female sports broadcaster in Guam, although there weren't many sports broadcasters, period, in Guam. There were only two of us <laughs> when I worked there, so it wasn't like it was that big of a deal. But I was the first female sports anchor in Knoxville. Uh, Tennessee as well. And, and that was hard. I'm not going to lie. That was hard. I definitely felt the pressure. I was I was called that sports girl. People didn't know my name. They just called me that sports girl. And I got, you know, cat called a few times. Um, and, and I will say this, uh, as a woman in this industry starting out, there's no doubt in my mind that I was scrutinized more so, more, I was scrutinized more heavily than guys were. And this has been proven to me time and again, quite frankly. Um, a male colleague of mine and I both made the same mistake on the year. It was a dumb mistake. It was like um, something about a player. I can't remember what it was. It was something about a player. Uh, we said something about a player that was incorrect. I was doing the 6 o'clock sports. He was doing the 10 o'clock sports. Both of us made the same mistake. Um, there are fewer viewers at 6 than there are at 10. 10 is the money maker in the local TV news world. If you're on the East or West Coast, 11 is the money maker. But 10 o'clock here in the Central Time Zone in Dallas-Fort Worth is the big newscast that everybody is focused on. Um, I received like three or four emails. You don't know what you're talking about. You got that information completely wrong. You're an idiot. You're a dumb girl. You don't belong in this industry, which is fine. I made the mistake. I owned up to it. No big deal. I responded to the people. We became friends after the fact. The guy, the male sports anchor, didn't get a single email. You know, and, and you'll hear this time and again from people in this industry. Guys can gotta, kind of get away with mistakes. Girls, women, sometimes not so much. I'm um, constantly asked. So that's, that's just something to be mindful of, whether you're a guy or a girl. 
you definitely want to minimize the mistakes. And that's not to say you're not going to make some because you'll definitely make mistakes. You will. Watch the news tonight. I guarantee you, you will not see a flawless broadcast. Watch the uh, network news in the morning, the Today Show, Good Morning America. You're not going to see a flawless show. But uh, mistakes do happen. Watch ESPN. You'll see a mistake or two. The thing about it, those people make mistakes, they learn from them, and they move on, and they definitely try and minimize them. Um, as a woman in the sports, I feel like I'm talking like Doug Williams when he was asked, have you always been a black quarterback <laughs> when, when, he was with, when he won the Super Bowl with the Redskins? Um, I've always been a female sportscaster. Uh, I am always asked about being a woman in the locker room. And my advice to any woman or any man for that matter, because I think the advice is the same for everyone, don't look down, don't look eye level, just kind of look up all around because you do go into locker rooms and you see everything, you do. I mean, it's, it's not natural, it's not normal, but it's their room, it's the professional athlete's room, it's their domain, you have to respect it, be professional and be respectful at the same time. Uh, don't go in there and donkey jack, but look up, don't look down because you could definitely see something that you don't want to see. I, I can I can just speak to that as well. Um, just be professional at all times, and you won't have a problem. And that's not to say that I haven't seen people who were professional at times. I had an intern um, at one station here in town who was who who was not shy about handing her phone number to professional athletes when she accompanied us on stories. Um, she's not in this industry, needless to say. And, and let's let's talk about the industry a little bit. You know, a lot of people think that you get in this business and it is raining money. And I, I hate to tell you, but that is just hardly the case. I think my first job out of college in Guam, um, the money wasn't bad in Guam because the cost of living is quite high. In fact, I made more than $30,000 a year in Guam, which was huge money. I mean, huge, but the cost of living in Guam is like Hawaii. Typically, if you start in a small market, say Sherman, San Angelo, Paducah, you know, really small markets, you're going to be making between twelve and fourteen thousand dollars a year. I know uh, sportscasters as well as news reporters in small markets who had to take government assistance because the money was so bad. Um, but why did they keep up with it? Because it's a fun job. It's an industry in which you get to not just do something, but you get to cover history. You get to be there when history happens. You get to be at the forefront of these amazing stories. You get to meet the most amazing people and, and you get to talk about it and report on it and share your perspective on these stories. And that's something that I'm not going to lie is really cool. But the money's not great. You start out, the money's not good. You're expected to dress a certain way. You're expected to have great hair, great makeup. This applies to men as well. Um, and, and it's hard to do that on $14,000 a year. As you go up in market size, your salary will undoubtedly increase. Uh, going up in market size is tough because the competition becomes tougher for those jobs. Uh, the competition is better. The competition is stronger for those jobs. Um, people in those larger markets are also generally looking for the next newest best things. They're always looking to upgrade their talent pool as well. I can tell you I went to the University of Houston and I think there were 200 people who graduated in my School of Communications class. Um, beyond three years after, two years after we all graduated, there were only three of us working full-time in sports media. Why? Because the money's bad. The work is hard. The hours are quite long. It's not a job where you leave, you shut the door, and you're done. You are always on call. I missed my daughter's first birthday. I have been pulled away from parties to go cover Tara Lowen's accidental drug overdose. Um, I have missed weddings. I've missed friends, uh, monumental, and friends and families, monumental moments because I was I was working, and I'm not disappointed for that. Disappointed about that. I'd frankly rather be um, working, <laughs> quite covering those great events. And and this industry attracts those kind of people, those people who are passionate about what they do, who sometimes have a hard time shutting things off and um, you know, kind of disassociating with, with, with the gig. Uh, you're, you always have to be on 24 hours a day because if news breaks, you have to be there to report on the breaking news or try and get the story. And to that point, you always have to be on the lookout for a story. If you're at a party and you hear something, a source tells you something that could be a news story down the road, 
you better stop drinking, you better start thinking. I mean, it, really, you always have to be looking out for the story, the breaking news, how you can perhaps get ahead of a particular story. Um, it's a job that is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You work holidays. You uh, don't get a lot of vacation time. Uh, you can't take vacations in November or February because that's the sweeps period when ratings are measured by TV stations. So a lot of local news uh, stations won't let you take holidays during that time. Um, also, you uh, you have to look a certain way. A lot of people in their contracts have uh, moral turpitude clauses that uh, you have to behave a certain way or you can't cut your hair. That doesn't fall under the moral turpitude clause, but um, you definitely have to behave a certain way. Don't get a DWI, don't cut your hair, don't get your nose pierced, that sort of a thing. Um, there are a lot of restrictions placed on you, but, but I gotta tell you, it's worth it because it's so much fun and uh, it's an industry that is tough and, 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 and can be frustrating, but the jobs within the industry are so much fun. I've covered a lot. Um, I see a couple of you here watching. Please feel free to ask a question via the Google Plus Q&A app right down below. I'm open to any questions you have. I'm gonna share just a couple more uh, nuggets of information with you, things that might be helpful to you um, just as you kind of go forward with your, with, with your career as a sports broadcaster. So. What are some things in summary that you can start doing right now? Things to start doing now. Like I said earlier, blogging. This helps you develop your voice and your point of view. A lot of people want to go into TV and think they aren't going to have to write. You know what? You're going to have to write each and every day. Start recording yourself on camera. Get comfortable talking in front of a camera. Use a computer, Google+, your mirror to watch and record yourself. I would even encourage some of you who are interested in being sports broadcasters or, or news anchors or news reporters, radio personalities, why don't you start recording a Google Plus Hangout? Each of you just spend five minutes doing your own sports cast, so to speak, and see how it looks. Record it, give each other some good, honest feedback, and see how it goes. Practice, mess up, learn, repeat, improve. This third one right here is something you're going to do time and again in your sports broadcasting career. Homework, homework, homework. Keep reading, keep learning. Whenever I speak to students, I tell them that I do more homework now than I ever did when I was in college because when you host a pre or post game show for the Dallas Mavericks, Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Stars, or Texas Rangers, you have to know what you're talking about, and you have to be ready to fill some dead air if dead air happens, and you have to be prepared for any scenario. Prepared for any scenario, um, if something happens to a particular player during a game, you have to be able to provide some context to why this player's um, night or afternoon is significant. A lot of the homework you do, you won't use, but it is important to have in your back pocket. Engage others in social media. Start following people you admire and respect on Twitter, on Facebook, or Instagram. Subscribe to their blogs, talk to them, email them. When it's time for you to intern or apply for a job, they will know who you are. That is an edge. Definitely start thinking about your internship. If you want to go into TV news, if you want to go into sports broadcasting, if you want to go into weather, if you want to go into sports media, any type of media, you need to have an internship. That's the first thing people are gonna look for when you're getting your first job. If you're a little bit too young in school for an internship, ask if you can do a shadow day. This gives you an initial glimpse into the business and a valuable contact down the road. If you're gonna go into TV, hair, makeup, and clothing count. Don't be fooled to think that you can just show up without any makeup on with your hair looking like a mess and um, be okay. It all does count for guys and for girls. And finally, be nice and be yourself. Don't get sucked into being some kind of a tool or imitating your voice and style after somebody else. Be the best, this is gonna sound cheesy, but trust me on this, be the best version of you that you can be. Um, one more slide here for you, some resources that are definitely helpful to you if you wanna go into the media business. Um, if you want to go into sports, you got to check out all the important sports websites, ESPN, CBS Sports, you know what they are, you know how important they are. 
Um, you need to check out all those websites. Make them your daily home. Check out your local newspaper. Be familiar with the teams in your market, the news in your market. Know the stories that matter in the city in which you live. Also, these websites on uh, line three right here, these websites are good if you want to go in the TV business. TVSpy.com is a website geared towards local TV news. TV Newser is run by the same company, Media Bistro. TV Newser is uh, news and information about network news. FTV Live, that is a local news blog that covers news all over the country in every market. Um, and then follow local TV bloggers within your market. Uncle Barky in Dallas-Fort Worth is the go-to guy. Barry Horn covers sports media in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, Gene Jackal covers local media in San Antonio. Mike McGuff covers local media in Houston. Roger Fetter, I think it's Roger Fetter, covers it in Chicago. Every, every city has uh, somebody who covers local news and local media within that particular market. Uh, TAB.org is the Texas Association of Broadcasters website. Check them out or any state's Association of Broadcasters site. That's a great resource for jobs and things of that nature. Physical resources, these things definitely matter. Makeup, uh, TV news is unforgiving. Those cameras are brutal. Uh, Mac, Makeup Forever, they do a great job with their high definition makeup. That's the makeup you're going to want to use, high def makeup. Um, guys, this, this applies to you as well. Even out in the field, I know a lot of guys who put on makeup in the field um, beyond just the anchor desk. Go to any professional makeup counter, tell them you need makeup for television purposes, and there'll be someone there who can help you. A proper hairstylist, get a good haircut and a good hairspray. Um, I know this sounds cheesy, but you don't want to be that reporter with your hair that is... I will show you because this has happened to me a hundred times. You don't want to be that reporter with your hair doing this while you're on camera or your hair doing this while you're on camera. I have been there. That has been me a hundred times. I've had some of my male colleagues uh, do that as well, have that happen to them as well. You don't want that to happen to you. Get some good hairspray. I like uh, TG Bedhead hairspray. It holds your hair pretty well without being too stiff. Uh, professional clothing. That is something that's also really important. Wear bright colors that pop on camera. No real crazy patterns. Uh, this pink shirt, bright color, pops on camera. This would be something that I'd have no problem wearing on the air in a TV studio or in anything of that nature. Um, stores like Nordstrom, Banana Republic, Ann Taylor, J. Crew, Brooks Brothers, they can help you. Don't be shy about going to these stores and say, look, I'm on a budget. I don't have a lot of money to spend, but I need one or two quality looks that will help me look like a professional on camera. I don't want any patterns because patterns are wavy when they're on television and on camera and they just don't look very professional. I need solid, bright colors to help me pop on camera. Guys, you got it so easy. All you need is one good suit, a handful of shirts, and a number of ties. That's where your investment will be is a number of ties. You just keep cycling out those ties and you are just fine. Women, we got it a little bit tougher when it comes to dressing for your television career. So that just about does it. Um, I hope I answered a few questions that you may have. Last call for questions if any of you want to submit a question via the Google Plus Q&A app. Otherwise, thank you so much for being a part of this so you want to be a sportscaster, Google Plus Hangout. This is all of my contact information. Again, you can reach me on Twitter and Instagram at the Gina Miller. You can also catch me on my website, theginamiller.com. Um, always happy to answer a few questions, share information with you, or really just, just uh, let you pick my brain and Trust me, I'll probably pick your brain as well. So keep in touch with me on social media and online. And until my next Google Plus Hangout, I hope you uh, do your homework, and I hope you really take a, a good hard look at this business because it's a lot of fun. It's very rewarding. It's quite competitive, but if you do decide to get into it, you'll be rewarded in a truly special way. So until next time, stay well and keep in touch with me on every social media platform there is. Take care.